Here is my Lenovo 13 Yoga. Uh, this is the Best Buy version, which comes with 4 gigs of RAM, but this particular machine will take an 8 gig stick of RAM. So I'm going to put that in today. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. My video recording device here is my HTC Resound cell phone, which means that it will probably go fuzzy a little bit as I change focal lengths. It's not your highest, most expensive camera, but we can see the tools that we're going to use. Uh, X-Acto knife, little precision flat blade, and the RAM going in. So to change this, you have to take the keyboard out. So to take the keyboard out, the best thing to do is have an X-Acto knife. It's got a nice flat, thin blade. You can use that X-Acto knife to get under this edge right here. And I've already taken my keyboard off simply because it's a two-handed job. Uh, but you get this under the edge just barely. You can lift that edge up and then you can use your flat blade on the top and get it in there and get a little pressure coming up this way and then run that pressure down this way rather slowly. You can feel like right here, right here, right here. There's clips that hold it in place and you can kind of pop those clips. Pressure straight up on the keyboard there will pop those clips. Once the clips are popped all the way down to the end, you can pull up gently on the keyboard as a whole and then once the keyboard's pulled up a little bit, you can slide it towards the screen to unhook it. This stage is a little bit scary. Uh, there is double-sided tape holding this keyboard down on the edges and in the middle. While you're pulling on it gently, you will hear the tape tearing off of the metal underneath. Uh, you're not breaking anything. It's supposed to make that sound. There's a couple small hooks that hold the keyboard onto the base underneath it, in addition to the clips that you've released. Those are the reason that you need to push the keyboard forward a little bit to get it out. I found that I didn't really have to push it forward much to get those to release. The biggest uh, part holding it in was, in fact, the tape. You want to be really careful and put as much even pressure on the whole keyboard at once while you're pulling up against the tape as possible, and you want your pressure to be as close to the tape as possible because otherwise you can bend this little keyboard. It's really thin, uh, easy to bend. So here we see our memory unit that we're going to take out, and like a lot of these kind of memory units, it's just got two little clips that you undo. Uh, the instructions for this computer actually say that you need to take the keyboard off and the keyboard bezel. You don't need to take the keyboard bezel off. The RAM will just come straight out there. We can replace it with the new stick, which uh, is again typically a two-hand job. I'm going to go ahead and not finish this so I can use two hands and get the proper pressure on it. Once it's in the proper place, you just stick the end down. Keyboard's going to go back in uh, notice also we did not have to disconnect the keyboard here, but if you did, it slides in. There's a little lock down underneath that. Uh, the keyboard itself, you set down a little bit towards, positioned a little bit towards the screen. You push down just lightly because that tape's going to try to grip. Bring it back toward the touchpad which should, if you've done it right, lock in the little hooks underneath. You can tell the hook, hooks are locked in because there's no bumps in the keyboard where those hooks are, which is more or less in the, the middle offset from, from the sides. Then you're going to want to push gently on the keyboard in a few places to make sure that that tape sticks it down nice and tight. And then you're done.